All right, let's move to our next item, which is uh, of importance. It's an informational update around the sideshow activity in the unincorporated area uh, response to that and, and how we're going to begin to try to move forward to address it. You guys are finished if you want to leave. So I think we've got um, information from the Sheriff's Department this evening, the Highway Patrol, as well as County Council. So who's going to start? Captain Blanchard. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, so obviously the sideshow problem has been uh, steadily increasing in the unincorporated area as well as our surrounding cities. Uh, those sideshows is, is nothing new um, in the region and throughout the state. Uh, we've noticed an increased trend over the past several months where these sideshows are spilling into our residential neighborhoods and into our unincorporated area. So over the past several months, the Sheriff's Office has made it a, a very serious priority to work with our partners and our neighboring cities uh, to have an intelligence-led policing process where we are gathering intelligence from intelligence centers, from crime analysis centers, and uh, increasing our staffing on the weekends to be able to predict, uh, identify, locate, um, enforce, and dissuade these sideshows. Uh, Within the last six months or so, we've realized that uh, we can't solve this problem independently, uh, partially due to the staffing requirements that it takes and the unpredictability of, of some of these sideshows. So we have partnered up with our neighboring agencies, uh, our partners with CHP out of the Hayward office, the Castro Valley office in the city of Dublin, CHP offices, we partnered up with uh, the Hayward Police Department and the San Leandro Police Department. Uh, and we are currently uh, working on a program where we're going to collaborate our efforts. We are going to create a team of uh, dedicated individuals from each agency to work together and collaborate uh, where we can staff uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 officers and supervisors from each of those agencies working together on specific weekends based on the intelligence that we re that we gather for sideshows to put out an enforcement team that's going to be able to, again, use the intelligence that we gather, uh, work with our neighboring counties to track the sideshows as they come into the area, and then uh, try to dissuade them from starting sideshows in our area. To, and if they do, uh, use our training and our experience to come up with a plan to prevent it. So. Um, we focused a lot of time and a lot of effort into this program. Uh, we are, we have the commitment of our surrounding agencies to participate with us. Uh, we have some great partners with the CHP and with Hayward San Leandro Police Departments, uh, and we will be up and running in February uh, on a six-month pilot program to see uh, the impact that we can have in our community uh, and and hopefully dissuade those that participate in sideshows to. Uh, take their business elsewhere and not bring it into our unincorporated areas. Uh, we've heard uh, loud and clear from our community members, uh, the, the impacts that this has, the negative impacts it has on their family life, the negative impacts it has on the roadways. Uh, we obviously know the hazards that come with these sideshows. They're very dangerous, especially when they get large in numbers. The individuals that are participating in this are very well organized. They use social media and they use, um, information distribution applications that we that we don't have access to to coordinate these events um, and it's it's very problematic for us but we are taking it with a uh, head-on approach and we are working very diligently with our partners and with the county to try and find solutions and mitigate some of this okay thank you who's next We'll ask questions. We'll hear from the uh, public after we hear from all the speakers. Hi, good evening. I just uh, would like to say thank you for inviting us. I'm Dan Jack, West Public Information Officer for California Highway Patrol, Castro Valley, and uh, Hayward area. I just first would like to introduce the command staff here for the combined areas: uh, Captain Austin Dammeyer and Lieutenant uh, Mike Novacell. Uh, Captain Dammeyer, say a few words. Yeah, good evening, Supervisors. Thank you very much for having us out. Um, I just want to come out and introduce myself. Uh, I'm new in the Hayward area as a commander. 
Uh, I come to you with over 20 years law, for, law enforcement experience. The majority of that's been in Alameda County. I uh, worked in Oakland, Hayward, uh, the Alameda Regional Auto Theft Task Force, uh, an ATF task force. So I do come with you with a lot of experience. Um, I live in San Lorenzo. I have family members here and I live in Castro Valley. So I'm really looking forward to working with the community, the supervisors to make sure that we're taking care of uh, traffic safety issues. Um, for those of, that you, of you that don't know, we are beginning the merger process with the Castro Valley and the Hayward areas into one command. Uh, we'll probably be moving into that command sometime next year. Uh, we're going to have a new office that's going to be located at Santa Clara and Jackson Street, and we're going to have one large command. So it's, it's something we're really excited about. We're going to be able to uh, eliminate some redundant positions within our command and put more officers uh, towards community oriented policing um, to tackle some of these issues. So thank you very much. I look forward to working forward with you. And real quick, I'll uh, let Mike introduce himself. Good evening. My name is uh, Michael Novosel. Um, I've been with the CHP for uh, 23 years, started my career in Redwood City. I worked there for 10 years. Uh, after that, I joined the Golden Gate Division K-9 unit, and I was uh, worked with the two K-9s for eight years. Promoted the sergeant in 2017. Uh, worked in Castro Valley for two years as a sergeant, one year in Dublin. And uh, in the beginning of 2021, I promoted to lieutenant. I worked two years in Oakland, and now I recently transferred to the area. Area. I look forward to working uh, with you, being part of the community, and uh, solving any issues that we have. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate that. So I just wanted to kind of echo what the captain had said. Um, this is a, a joint effort, um, and we want to give a special shout out to uh, Sergeant Cully from Alameda County Sheriff's Office, who's kind of uh, spearheading a lot of this uh, and uh, putting down a lot of um, uh, the uh, information and uh, a lot of the, a lot of, put a lot of effort into this uh, going forward and the captain as well. Um, just providing an update, uh, there has been no uh, serious uh, big sideshow act activity in um, the area since about December 21st. And, um, you know, we, we've been getting information this whole time, updates uh, from the community members. Uh, a special shout out to Mr. Anderson, who's here tonight. Uh, Mr. Anderson has been very, um, very uh, vocal and outspoken about this. We appreciate folks like him who have really um, been uh, active in reporting these issues. Um, Hayward CHP, Hayward Police Department, uh, San Leandro Police Department and the Alameda County Sheriff's Office are gonna be working uh, in collaboration um, as the captain has stated. And we're gonna be responding um, and training on how to better respond to these activities that are taking place. Um, what we're going to be doing moving forward, um, as you can see to the right, we have a social media post we just recently put out, is we're going to be trying to bring as much attention to this illegal activity as possible and awareness. And one thing that's going to help us do that is uh, getting tips from the community um, so we can better respond. Uh, so you can see here we have a post uh, which we put out on our social media and we continue to do posts like that. But we've created uh, an email address where it's a, it's a tip line where you can send us pictures, you can send us information and we will respond to that. Um, that. That information, that intelligence gathering uh, is crucial to combat illegal sideshows uh, occurring in the unincorporated area. As well as there's a, a call, uh, a line. It is monitored. Um, it's for non-emergencies only. I just want to stress that. If you're seeing an emergency happening or any sideshows taking place, you can still call 911 and report that. Um, but that is the 510 number, 901 uh, and that email address, it may not show up on the screen, is 345-RECKLESSDRIVING at chp.ca.gov. And we did bring handouts for our presentation. They're on the table here. So if anybody wants to get a handout, that's all included. Um, so this, uh, this team also is, there's a component of it as a special enforcement unit uh, from the CHP, which consists of five officers and a supervisor. And that special enforcement unit We'll not only look for that reckless driving and sideshow activity, but also will focus on aggressive driving in the neighborhood, speeding on particular roadways, major arterial roadways, or just in the neighborhoods. So you can report all that to us um, through those lines, and we can address that moving forward. And, and this is really, uh, we think, is crucial um, to help address the concerns that have uh, come up from the community here. And uh, we really appreciate that. So this regional sideshow enforcement team, also called RESET, um, is a collaborative effort again, is spearheaded um, by the Sheriff's Office. It's uh, from CHP side, we're gonna have the Hayward Office involved, Castro Valley, which again, they'll be combined, uh, Dublin area, 
And uh, we're going to be committing at least eight uniformed officers and one sergeant per detail. Um, we also, as needed, will have CHP air operations involved, which is crucial to monitoring these sideshows. Um, we don't want to create any further risk to public safety. Sometimes if you go into the middle of a sideshow, uh, people might feel threatened or they might feel cornered. They might produce a weapon. We don't want that. Um, if we can monitor it from a distance, that's also beneficial to us. Um, so moving forward, we're going to continue to train. As the captain said in February, we're going to uh, conduct some uh, uh, operations moving forward about six months uh, on a test uh, a temp, uh, basis um, to kind of evaluate how the progress is. But we're going to start training an additional 22 officers and two sergeants uh, in February. Um, these officers are going to either join the team or be on a rotation through the team to, uh, again, combat this activity. So some other things we're doing um, with intelligence gathering, we do have officers that are trained in monitoring, um, you know, outlets, social media accounts, things like that. We have those resources. Some resources are confidential we don't like to put out um, that are very beneficial to us as well. So where and when we can gather that information, we're going to um, gather it and put it to work. And that's at a regional level, a local level. Um, you know, there's fusion centers that we can work with to help broadcast this and try to combat this if it happens to spread from one area to another. We can kind of get ahead of that. We also have grants that are provided through the Office of Traffic Safety and uh, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration that might be able to assist us in this matter, um, such as uh, pertaining to eliminating street racing and shy shows. There's grants specific to that and to also regulating aggressive driving and reduce speed. There's focus grants that we can utilize to put extra officers on the street um, um, on, on a grant to, uh, to bolster our numbers and um, make a presence, if anything, show the doors in the community and, and make sure these folks that are engaging this legal behavior know that police are their CHP, the task force, uh, the sheriff's office. So uh, with that, um, we just wanna say thank you again for welcoming us in your community. Um, thank you for your concerns. If anybody has any questions, myself or the captain or the lieutenant, I'm happy to answer it. Uh, we'll have questions in just a second. Let me see if county council has anything to report on, and then we'll go to public comment. Hi, thank you. This is Farron Khan, uh, Deputy County Counsel. Uh, I do have a progress report from my office. Um, we are in the process of drafting an ordinance with consideration of similar ordinances in multiple jurisdictions, including the cities of San Jose and Stockton and the counties of Santa Clara and San Diego. Uh, our Alameda County ordinance will cover unincorporated county. The ordinance will prohibit sideshows, specifically street racing and reckless driving exhibitions. Uh, and we're building off a definition of reckless driving uh, in vehicle, vehicle code 23103. Ordinance will also prohibit knowingly being present for the purpose of observing a sideshow. The ordinance will prohibit knowingly encouraging, promoting, instigating, or facilitating a sideshow as well. In violations of this ordinance will constitute a misdemeanor. We are also looking into the assessment of penalties. Uh, and we hope to have a draft ready to circulate in 60 days. That's it for the progress report. And uh, I'm happy to pass on any questions to the attorneys uh, working on the ordinance. All right, I wanna thank <clears throat> the uh, County Council, Highway Patrol and Sheriff's Department for this update this evening. Before I hear uh, public comments and questions, let me just say, as a County Supervisor who represents this area, and I've been the supervisor since 2001. I've always felt we were blessed to have both CHP and SERF providing law enforcement here in that incorporated area. I've always felt that was, you know, a blessing, especially after you know I live in Oakland. I was on Oakland City Council, and it's much more challenging in Oakland. So I've always felt trying to make sure we have appropriate law enforcement, professional law enforcement at that in the unincorporated area has been extremely important to me. We hold a traffic safety meeting uh, through my office 
And I know the CHP and the Sheriff and Public Works and others participate in that because traffic safety is an extremely important priority for me. And it's important only because I know my constituents have stated that to me over the course of time. The sideshow, I and my office talked with the undersheriff, the CHP, about the sideshow back in 2016. We also met with representatives from Oakland, from the state, et cetera. And we were basically stating that if we didn't get a handle on this sideshow, this was back before 2016, it wouldn't get better, it would get worse. And we've seen it get worse. It's gotten worse because it's proliferated to other jurisdictions. It's gotten worse because it takes place on freeways, on bridges. It takes place just everywhere and law enforcement is overwhelmed with it. And then the sideshow has gotten worse because now there's all sorts of other illegal activity there, gunfire and other things. So, I'm extremely pleased that the CHP, the Sheriff's Department, will be partnering together and with other allied agencies, San Leandro, Hayward, et cetera, to crack down on sideshow activity, at least in my jurisdiction. And the point is, I've already stated this publicly when I've been, when I've been asked about it. The sideshow isn't just an issue for this area or this region. It's a statewide issue. So maybe we can set the example and possibly maybe um, the Attorney General and others might recognize the severity of this and the need for a statewide effort to address the sideshow activity. Because it has gotten out of hand. It affects the quality of life. It affects public safety and it needs to be um, curtailed. And so I'm just, I wanna make sure the public knows, our law enforcement uh, professionals know, as long as I'm the county supervisor, you're gonna have my support. You're gonna have my unwavering support. The ordinance that county council's moving to do, we've held up on this ordinance for about a year, only because county council's been overwhelmed. So I'm very pleased that we're gonna be moving this forward and trying to get an ordinance here in about 60 days. Because I do feel the crackdown of the sideshow isn't just the people involved in it, it's the spectators, it's the promoters. Everybody needs to be held accountable for that type of behavior. Finally, people have said, well, let's just let them, let's just make a place available for folks to do their, you know, their illicit, behavior with vehicles. And I've been very consistent on this since my days as a city council person in Oakland and as a county supervisor. We can provide them with that, but that's not gonna stop it because they just wanna do illegal behavior. The folks who wanna behave you know, properly, they might go there, but the rest of the folks who are doing the sideshow, they wanna do this because they wanna break the law. And it's my job working with the law enforcement to ensure that people are held accountable for their behavior. So I just want people to understand where I'm coming from on this. There's no ifs, ands, or buts in terms of where I'm coming from on this. I want this to be addressed to the best of our ability and I'll do whatever it takes to support law enforcement uh, in order to um, focus and target on this and at least maybe uh, make it um, not as inviting in our neck of the woods as it might be other places because we do see it everywhere. So I just want to state that for the record. Now we can have any public comment or questions that folks might have. How are you doing tonight? I just want to say uh, thank you guys to the sheriffs and the CHP um, for all you guys doing. Thank you all, all also. Um, it happened in front of our house in our neighborhood. Um, I appreciate it because we got little kids and the kids are ones that are extremely terrified. Um, they don't even wanna uh, go outside by themselves anymore, you know? So uh, I appreciate it. Um, 
Supervisor Tam, I was just wondering if we heard anywhere back from Public Works about uh, any of the speed bumps that uh, I think Amber Lowe was her name. She was talking about before um, putting those little black dots throughout the intersections. And I know the cold weather and the rain. I emailed them today. Oh, okay. to ask them what their progress is. So okay. I know the rain. Yeah, I know the rain and the cold. We're just wondering. The rain has subsided before. They Correct. Come. Understand. So, so I just emailed them today just, just to see like where are they or where are they going to do that. So I'll, okay. when they get back from you, I'll make sure to touch base okay. with them. All right. That was all. I just want to say thank you guys for your help on the situation. We appreciate it. Uh, Officer Blanchard, we see uh, guys out there um, doing their jobs as well. So thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. And did you speak at the last meeting? Yes, sir. So you're the one. Who, okay. All right. Good. I'm glad uh, Supervisor Hands Off is on it and serves on it. So yeah, because I, your what you were describing at our last meeting is just horrible. Yeah. So I'm glad you're, you're on it. Okay. Caller, you're on the line. You have three minutes, Michael. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, Michael Freed from Cherryland, and um, I want to thank uh, Officer Daniel for his presentation. The CHP is our uh, uh, meeting in December. I think it was December. Anyway, um, just had a couple of comments to try to mitigate these uh, sideshow things, and I'm wondering if there's any component to also address the uh, increased number of the uh, take back the streets bicycle groups that are in sort of a, it seems to me, uh, one of the areas where there might be at least some education for getting some of these kids at least stopped and, you know, talked to about wearing helmets and maybe stay on the right side of the road. Um, that's sort of an aside thing. But, um, I think maybe there should be some effort into addressing that as well as the sideshows because it's kind of like a, um, the juvenile way of doing it on your bike when you finally get your car, then you can, you know, go out to the sideshows. Anyway, the other thing I was wondering is there could there be any um, educational component of restoring, you know, driver training, driving money from the state to put that back into the public school system because um, I mean, this, I was raised and that's why I'm hopefully still remaining a good driver at this age. So anyway, just to call those and thank you all for your efforts. Mr. Barron. You wanna answer this question? Sure, I think I understand it, please. Michael, I think I understood your question because I know we've talked about this before uh, concerning these large groups of bicycle, uh, whether kids or I've seen adults, unfortunately, uh, uh, participate in this uh, um, illegal behavior, uh, taking up a lane or creating a block on the road, uh, whatever it is. Uh, oftentimes they're filming this activity, they're stunting. Um, and fortunately, we even seen them on 238, three or four of them taking a, a lane on 238 uh, some months ago. Um, so as this happens, we, we do get calls on it. We go out there. We have issued citations in Castro Valley. Uh, unfortunately, uh, not too long ago, there was a young um, a juvenile that was hit on East 14th who was doing a wheelie riding in the wrong direction. And we had to respond and, and, and conduct an investigation on that. So as we're seeing this activity, we are taking enforcement action. And this is something that our special enforcement unit, we talked earlier about our five, five officers and a sergeant, that's actively going um, right now. So before even February, where we're going to see more of this uh, sideshow response from the reset task force, we're, we have that special enforcement unit going and they've been working on projects like addressing the issues on Crow Canyon and Palomaris and Redwood and the unincorporated areas, um, uh, the roadways there. And then also in, in Cherryland and Ashland, uh, focusing on some of the lower Grove areas uh, as, we're, as we're speaking. So, so thank you for that. We're continuing to look at that, Mike. And Mike, your phone reception is not very good, so you, you broke up a lot. Uh, Keith Barrows from San Lorenzo, um, uh, addressing that bicycle issue, maybe, you know, kind of like, uh, kind of piggyback on what we do with some of the sideshow activities, maybe uh, if you develop uh, an ordinance or whatever it is, uh, when there's uh, this, this business going on with the, uh, with the blocking the road with the bicycles, uh, I, think, I think confiscating a few bicycles might put an end to that kind of thing. Um, anyway, um, 
I, I want to say that uh, uh, tra traffic and pedestrian safety is very important to me also. It's what got me involved in any of these public matters a little over 25 years ago. And I'd like to say uh, uh, thank you for your response uh, from Dan and, uh, and your uh, fellow CHP uh, folks here and uh, all the other law enforcement agencies. Thank you for your response to this issue because it is a, a, a very important one. Um, I know we probably got a little bit of a break from Christmas and New Year's and, and the weather as far as uh, uh, the sideshow is concerned, well, I guess they'll probably start to pick up as it uh, or attempt to pick up uh, as the time goes on. I also want to thank Mr. Anderson. Uh, uh, we've never met. I've seen you at these meetings before. And uh, as Mr. Anderson and his uh, neighbors and fellow rabble rousers, uh, that, that's that's how that's how things get done. And um, yeah, thank you for helping make a safer community and uh, not. Uh, not hiding or just shaking your head or moving away, you, you, you did something. And um, I'd like to shake your hand before I go on. Thank you. I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, uh, I'd like to also ask that uh, when that this, in, that this information, uh, that we make sure and get uh, this information, particularly these phone numbers and these contacts uh, into the Santa Rosa Village Home Association uh, newsletter that comes out. Um, and you know, a nice big bold right up front. You know, have them put it there where everybody's going to see it. So you know, some people just get that thing and toss it, but uh, that would be a, a real good, a real good uh, thing. And I was going to ask, uh, I also was going to ask a question about the physical uh, mitigations that uh, public works. So I, I, I was assuming we're going to get an update here at this meeting. Um, I look forward to, uh, I, I look forward to hearing from um, Jared. Yeah, I, I'd like to know also what uh, what they said at public works. Anyway. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, Nate. And uh, thank you again, Mr. Harris. And just to, just to say real quick, Keith, uh, we did provide it to at the last uh, Homer Association meeting. We provided that info on the reporting sideshow and um, all the stuff we just talked about. Right Excellent. Thank you. Caller, you're on the line. You have three minutes. And I uh, and Ann Maris here. Looks funny to see my name up there. Um, Dr. Ann, I'm a, a resident of Castro Valley, and I want to um, I, I, I want to make some comments about uh, the sideshows uh, with regard to the community development here. And uh, I want to first off thank the sheriffs and the Highway Patrol for letting me feel safe in my neighborhood, and for the you know the excellent job that. Uh, I see you out there doing every day. So, so thank you for that. I feel like you are being burdened by a problem that, you know, like many, you didn't make. This um, sideshow thing, in my opinion, is a result of taking away all of our forms of entertainment, all of the places where people could drive a four wheel car or could drag race or could shoot a gun or could roller skate or could go to a drive in movie. Um, or could go to a flea market here and meet neighbors and trade money and goods. You know, we've lost all that. And meanwhile, we're putting in thousands more units. And it's just frightening to me where we're going. And my opinion is that I'm, I'm a biochemist, a scientist, and that humans are animals too. And I'm not an expert in your field. I really admire your solutions and your training um, at every level there. Um, and so I appreciate that. I'm, I'm not speaking to that, but I'm speaking to the fact that human beings are animals living in an environment. We, we, we react to pressure and, and we know that. And so I, I feel whenever we see residents fighting residents, residents not happy with other residents' behavior, we need our higher ups to take responsibility. For example, um, our supervisors and to to look at the root problems because we can't keep building on this pressure pot and then expecting people to just live in their little cracker box apartment and go to work and go back to their apartment. No, kids and everyone, we need, we need places to, to recreate to, you know, when I realize we're getting out of the vehicle era, the car era, but you know, a lot of people still enjoy their vehicles. And where do kids have that they could race their family car, take their station wagon, you know, like we used to have, or go to a roller rink or a drive. We don't have that for them anymore. So, so I just basically want to empathize with the um, various levels of law enforcement. And I, I appreciate making more ordinances. And I just think that um, looking 
more intelligently at the root of, of the, uh, the problem, in particular with all this development planned, you know, right, it, it's just frightening to me where we're going. So um, I would hope that uh, all this money getting put into crime recidivism and everything, you know, there's a lot of money and uh, yet we don't see any solutions. We see undulations. We, we see things getting worse as far as um, recreation for kids and young adults. And so, um, it, you know, it's frightening to have someone come do a pop-up party in your yard or to spin cars around, you know, right, right here or shoot guns off, which is what happens where I live on Grove Way fairly regularly. Um, so I just implore the uh, supervisors to think creatively of uh, including recreational possibilities for uh, kids, young adults, and uh, us old people too. Thank you for listening. I have no more online speakers. All right, so I want to thank speakers and um, man, I you know you've heard heard me say this before. We're going to be putting together a specific plan for uh, South Castro Valley that. Um, might help to alleviate some of the dearth and uh, recreation and open space that I know you've been a very strong advocate for. Uh, you know, there is a strong push to have more development, more housing, and I don't think we're going to be able to avoid that, but we can try to craft um, our general plan and our specific plan, how all this might take place. So I agree with you, we need the recreation but I also state some people are, are just gonna act inappropriately regardless of whatever we do. And so it's like a parent with a child. You've gotta establish some boundaries. There's gotta be some accountability. And that's what um, government is here for, to ensure that there's orderliness, there's not chaos. Um, otherwise, yeah. So, but I do recognize what you're saying, and we are going to be working on that, particularly in Southern Castro Valley, the area that you reside in. And so uh, I think that's uh, moving through the Castro Valley Municipal uh, Planning Council as I, as I speak. And then I do, and yeah, there was no presentation from Public Works this evening, so uh, Keith's right, we should have Public Works speaking, because some of the sideshow activity can be prevented through engineering. Once again, it's not a panacea. None of this is a, a panacea, but all of that is required, the education, the engineering, the enforcement, et cetera. So we'll continue to uh, monitor this and as appropriate, have this item back before us um, as necessary. Daniel's online. <laughs> I don't know if Daniel wants to say anything. Uh, Dr. Wolf Desenbeck, the head of our public works agency, do you want to weigh in on this at this point in time? Uh, the only thing I would say is that uh, we do have uh, some measures uh, that we will be putting in. Unfortunately, we got kind of derailed because of the storm. All efforts right now, all hands are on, uh, on uh, trying to mitigate the impacts of the storm, but uh, we do have uh, an agreed solution where we'll be putting bad dots at various intersections to uh, at least uh, discourage uh, uh, these uh, sideshow activities. So we should be putting them in very soon, soon as we get some relief in uh, mitigating the storm impacts. Okay, thank you. Because I know we've seen those dots. They've been, uh, I know in Oakland, they've put it some dots at certain locations and it has prevented it. But really all it does is it just moves it to someplace else. So that's why you put those dots in, but you still need these guys and gals, because like I said, there's some people just not gonna uh, behave properly. And we know that, and maybe I'm just jaded and, and you can call me that, but I know I've seen too much and experienced too much to trust that people are gonna behave properly. Uh, they aren't, unless we have some rules and we have some consequences and we have some accountability. 